Hey guys, this time I wanted to talk about how I add backgrounds to the panels of my webtoon in the least possible amount of time and effort. Backgrounds are scary, I know. I struggle a lot with drawing them. And even though I could spend time learning how to do them properly, drawing a comic is not an easy job and is very time consuming. Especially if you're working on it by yourself, you need to cut corners as much as possible and work smart, not hard, so that you can produce your chapters in a timely manner. This is why thankfully we've reached an age where we can do this simply by building our backgrounds from elements that are already available and just arrange the elements in a way that gives us a complete scene and a convincing environment. But of course, even if you're gonna use pre-made assets, you'll need at least some basic knowledge and perspective and how things behave in space. Okay, so when it comes to background creation, I basically follow three methods. Either use ready-made SketchUp models or input 3D models into Clip Studio Paint and arrange them in the panel so that I get a complete scene or use a combination of both. And I'm gonna show you what I mean by each. So, the first method, using ready-made SketchUp models. There are countless places where you can get SketchUp models from, but I wouldn't recommend a website more than I would recommend Acon 3D, because it specifically has 3D models made just for webtoon use. So you can get all those themed backgrounds and environments, whether it's a modern time setting, city, a school and classroom, or fantasy themed European styled mansions with their gardens and all their interior. It's just amazing, you can do so much with those backgrounds. So I'll show you how I make use of these 3D models and how I extract the scene and input it in my panels to get the complete look. The scenes I'll work on this time are based in a city, so I'm gonna use this full set of City Backgrounds 3D model. Now after purchasing and downloading this 3D model, how do you open it? Of course you can get the latest SketchUp version and download it and use it, but the thing is, that only has a 1 month free trial and then requires a monthly subscription. But thankfully, there exists a free option that we can make use of, which is called SketchUp Make. It's a free software, but it's kind of outdated now. I think development stopped on it in 2017, but it still can do the job and that's what we really care about. So let's open the City 3D model. I'm gonna use City Block C file for the purpose of these panels. So there can be two cases where you want to get a shot for your panels. Either it's a background only shot or it's a background with characters in the scene. I'll show you the first case which is a background only shot. For example, in chapter 8 of my webtoon I have this very vague rough draft of my panel but anyway I want a shot of the city with the sky showing. So basically I just want to find a place in this 3D model and take a shot. For this panel I decided to go here in this portion of the city. So I'm zooming into the scene using the mouse wheel and then clicking on the mouse wheel allows me to rotate the scene and if you want to pan through the scene you just hold shift and click on the mouse wheel at the same time. If you don't want your scene to have a 3 point perspective you can just go to camera and then click on 2 point perspective. This way it will make all your lines vertical if this is what you really want. But for the purpose of this scene I'm gonna keep it as 3 point perspective. So I like this shot and I want to export it and use it in my panel. So I'll go to file, export and then 2D graphic and then I'll choose where I want to save it. I'll call it city shot 1 colored. One important thing is if you're drawing high quality make sure to change the quality of the picture from here under options. You can use your view size which is very small. I don't know but I usually go for this size or it can be anything like 6000 for example pixels. Uh, 5000. Do whichever you want. I usually go for higher pixels because that guarantees me a high quality output. Now why did I call it colored? Because as you can see I have an emptiness over here so I'm gonna have to do some adjustment. But with the way the current shot is it will be a bit hard to add that because we have trees in the way and buildings and everything. So what I'm gonna do is I'll extract the line art of this shot. I'll do that by going to view then face style then use hidden line. Now I can see the lines of my artwork but we still have the sky in the scene and we want to remove that. So under the styles box go to edit and then go to this one watermark settings and uncheck display watermarks. Also make sure to go to background settings and untick sky and ground like if I enable them I won't get a transparent line art so just disable them and then again go to file export 2D graphic and then city shot one call it line art. Now I'll drag both shots that I just took to Clip Studio Paint to open them. So this is the line art and this is the complete shot. 
and as you can see here the buildings and other stuff still have a white background if we wanted to get rid of this whiteness and just have the lines then we can go to edit and convert brightness to opacity and now those lines are transparent but for this scene i just want to select the area of those items so that i can remove the sky you might ask why didn't i just remove the sky from the 3d model earlier because look here the model has a kind of bluish tint thanks to the sky watermark but see if i remove the display watermarks or remove the sky the colors turn darker and i really want that bluish tint to stay in there so i'm keeping it the way it is i like the colors the way they are so i'm gonna select and copy both backgrounds and go to my panel then go to edit and paste to shown position and i'll do the same thing for this other shot so that they're placed on top of each other so i'm gonna hold shift and select both layers and then click ctrl t to transform them and adjust them according to the scene i want so this is how the scene looks like like i imagined it i'm gonna do some adjustments here to complete the picture first of all i want to add some buildings over here so i'll go to the materials and i'll go to image materials and then illustration and then building and i'll just drag this city transparent asset and i'll transform it and place it in the way that looks best now I want to get rid of those buildings that are coming in the way. And this is where the line art shot comes in handy. I'll go to the line art layer, this one, but I'll hide it. And I'll just hold control and click on the thumbnail of the layer. Now all those elements are selected. So what I'll do is I'll go to the buildings layer and invert the selection. And then click on create layer mask. Now we have it placed correctly. So with this scene almost done, I'll just do some quick adjustments to finalize the background. For example, I'll fill the sky color here. And using cloud brushes, I'll fill in this space. And I'll airbrush this slightly on a clip layer above it with some colors. Also, I'm gonna fade those buildings a little bit because things get bluish due to the atmosphere the farther they are from us. I can also add a little bit of life by adding some cars to the scene. So for example, I'll use this, again, default 3D asset that comes with Clip Studio Paint under 3D small object and then vehicle. And now I'll use this car. I'll just drop it. I'll disable the shadow. Adjust it a little bit by rotating. So far so good, it looks convincing. So I'll extract its lines by going to layer property and then extract line and then convert to lines and tones and I'm gonna use these settings and click OK. Now the car lines got extracted into three layers, first outline, second outline and then the fill layer and all of these are set to be monochrome or black and white so I'm gonna change them one by one to color because I want to color them choose the color I usually use for line art in my comic which is this purplish light black color and then lock the transparency of the layer and go to edit then fill the same thing for the second outline lock the transparency edit fill I'll disable the fill layer and enable the 3d car model and I'll remove this extract line now I'm gonna go and add layer new correction layer color balance I'm gonna just clip it to the car for now because I'm just editing the colors of the car. I'll also add a new level correction layer and I'll clip it to the car. When it comes to edits, I literally try so many different options until I find a convincing outcome. Add a shadow using a multiply layer beneath the car and adjust the overall color balance. Finally, I'll select all those layers and merge them. I'll copy them. I'll just copy what I have and then undo the merging. I don't know, I use this method but I'm not sure it's the best. But anyway, and then I paste the complete scene and then I'll select this scene again. Go to filter, blur, radial blur since I want to indicate movement in the scene. I can also add one thing that I forgot to add earlier which is take the color of the sky, create a new layer set the mode to hard light and then just airbrush over everything to give it that atmospheric look i will also add a correction layer of hue saturation i'm gonna increase the saturation to give it that anime-ish look now what if you have shots with characters in it but you want to get the background from a sketchup model while getting the right shot with the right angle for the setting of your scene 
For example, I have a scene over here of Hideki and Sakura riding their bicycles and they have a background of buildings behind them and I want to get a shot that's suitable for this scene so that I establish the background first and then sketch the characters. For this scene, I'll still use the 3D city model from earlier in SketchUp but I'm gonna make the SketchUp window transparent so that I can see my model while adjusting it for my scene. The trick to making your SketchUp window transparent is by downloading an add-on software called Vitrite. Once you install this software, you open the window that you want to make transparent and then you hold Ctrl plus Shift and click any number on your keyboard. For example, if I press Ctrl and Shift and 1, it will make it very transparent. So I'm gonna go for Ctrl, Shift and 5, which is 50% transparency. And I'll navigate through the 3D model to get the shot I want. And I'll just go File, Export, 2D Graphic like I did earlier and insert it into my scene. Then sketch the characters and color them and do all the effects and adjustments like I showed you earlier. So that was my first method. The second method is using 3D models directly in Clip Studio Paint. For example, I have this scene. I want to have a background behind these characters. For this scene, there is an exact 3D model that I'm gonna use that comes with the default Clip Studio assets and that will be under 3D, background, housing, and this residential area. So I'll just click on it and drag it to my scene and just adjust it using those controls. I'll adjust the shadow from here because these are sunlit buildings. Or actually I'm gonna remove the light source altogether because it looks softer this way. This scene has some exaggerated perspective so I'll edit the settings of the object by clicking on the branch tool and then going to camera and then adjusting perspective. I'm gonna duplicate this residential area and adjust the perspective to normal. And I'll adjust it so that I can fill the empty space. The accuracy is not really gonna matter because you're gonna hide stuff as you're drawing by airbrushing and picking stuff from here and there. So for example, I'll continue the street here and slightly airbrush this part over here. And for the sky, I'm just gonna add a sky image that I already have. It's also a set of images I bought from Acon 3D. And I'll transform it a little bit to give it some perspective. And I'll edit its colors a little bit to make it lighter. And I'll edit the colors of the background again with color balance adjustment layer. Shifting the shadows towards the blue, the highlights towards cyan and then add a hard light layer on top of the houses with the sky colors to give them that bluish tint. And the rest is easy, I'll just color the characters and do more adjustments and add effects and then finalize the scene. By the way, for this scene I also used 3D models of bicycles that are found in Clip Studio Paint assets and I edited them in a similar way like I did with the car earlier. And there you go, these are the methods I currently use to add fully detailed backgrounds to my webtoon. Very simple and easy and super convenient. Using these methods can really enhance your production speed and quality as well. I hope you found this video useful and let me know if you have other tips regarding making backgrounds creation easier. I've linked all the products and models I used in this video in the description box so make sure to check it out. And special thanks to Acon 3D for providing me with the city model that I used in this video. I'm very thankful for their services overall. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. This video was brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community that offers thousands of inspiring classes in the creative fields of illustration, design, animation, and much more. It even has classes on useful life and work skills like freelancing, productivity, and lifestyle. In a nutshell, Skillshare offers so much of what you'd seek to feed your curious minds. And the interesting thing about it is that you can get access to all those classes at once when you join. If you don't know yet, I'm also an instructor on Skillshare. I recently launched a new course for beginners that will help you learn digital coloring from scratch, starting from the very basic concepts of digital drawing, through learning how to create a complete character artwork with a detailed explanation of sketching, line art, coloring and shading the skin, eyes, hair, and clothes, and then finalizing your artwork with color adjustments and background. And my anime drawing for beginners class is also there, which can teach you how to start drawing characters from scratch. The great news is that you can try my classes and every other one for free now, because the first 1000 people to click the link in the description box will get a free 1 month trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. Head to the link in the description box to join the community, explore, and enjoy learning.